All right, so here I've opened up Atom, and in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and write our very first Ruby file. It's going to be a very simple program. It just outputs text to the screen. So I'm going to close all of these tabs. The shortcut to close the current tab that you're active on is going to be Control W. You can very quickly use it to just move across and delete or close out of all of your tabs. Let's go ahead and create a new file. You can do that by either doing File, New File, or using the shortcut here, Control plus N. I'm going to click on it here. Here we have a brand new file. Here's where we're actually going to be writing our code. By the way, if you want to blow this up or make it smaller, you can use the Control key as well as the minus or plus keys. The plus key is going to make it larger. The minus key is going to make it smaller if you just want to blow it up so it's a bit more visible. All right. So let's first begin by saving our file as a Ruby file. So we can use the save shortcut, which is Control plus S. That's going to launch us to our prompt. What I want to do here is create a new folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go to my desktop, right click here, select new folder, and I'm going to call my folder Ruby. Let's click inside it. And this is going to be where I'm going to be saving all of the files throughout my course as I work on them. You do not have to keep all your files on a folder called Ruby on the desktop. You can place it wherever you'd like. Um, and in addition, the way that you structure your files is also going to be up to you. So I'm not going to preach any kind of standard. If you want to have uh, a subdirectory for every section and a file for every um, for every lesson, that's that's a good recommendation. If you want to have one file per section, uh, that's another option. If you want to have one file for the entire course and just overwrite it, that's another option. That's going to delete all of your work. But uh, however you want to structure your your uh, your course management and your file management is totally up to you. I do recommend keeping everything within one folder though. And the only other thing that, I, that I'd like to add is whenever you're saving your files, make sure to avoid using spaces in the file name. If you have to represent a space, just place an underscore. So for example, if I have a file that I'm going to call cool program, instead of writing it like this, I'm just going to put a underscore right here in between any anywhere where there would be a space. Generally, spaces are a big no-no among programmers. They tend to make a program much more likely to run into error if there are spaces in the file name. So I generally avoid those things. And let's create our first Ruby file. We're just going to do a single word here. I'm going to call the file example. And all Ruby files end with the extension .rb. So just like every other file on your computer has an extension, for example, a Microsoft Word file has the extension .docx, all Ruby files have the extension .rb. That's how the Ruby interpreter knows that it's working with a Ruby file and can, ex and can actually execute it properly. So once we click Save, we're going to create a new example file. You should see this menu pop up on the left, this project management tab. If it doesn't, you can hold the control key and press backslash. When I press it, in my case, it's going to make it go away. Once I press it again, it's going to bring it back. So that's the control plus the backslash. And this is called the project management pane. This is basically where it's going to show you what current folder you're in and all of the files that you have logged within that folder. So as you can see, we're in the Ruby folder that we just created. It's also written right here. And we have this single example.rb file within it. Obviously, as you add more files, this list is going to grow further down and down. If you add more directories within your Ruby uh, primary folder, those directories will appear nested underneath here and so on and so on and so forth. If you want to, for example, add another project directory, you can simply right click here, click add project folder. That will bring you to a prompt where you can select what folder you'd like to make or add to this project pane. Of course, if you want to remove something, you can simply right click it and click remove project folder. That's not the same thing as deleting it. Deleting it permanently deletes it. Removing it from the project folder, removing project folder means just remove it from the this menu pane over here on the left side. This is basically just the way that we don't have to use Windows Explorer to navigate and find the right files. We can simply select them here and go to each file within a single click. So I'm just going to hide this again with control backslash. And here is our example file. So let's go ahead and write our first Ruby program. I'm going to begin with a word called puts, P-U-T-S, and then a space. And then I'm going to put double quotes. So that's going to require the shift key. And as soon as I write my first one, you can see the Atom text editor is automatically going to add my second one. That's pretty good. It's helping us out. And the way this works is that puts outputs uh, text to the screen. In programming, we call a, a co collection of text a string. That is, the, that is the, the technical name for it. A string is just a collection of characters or text. It can include 
letters like English letters. It can include symbols like, you know, the exclamation point. It can include things like periods and question marks, and it can, it can include numbers. But everything has to be written within double quotes. That's how Ruby knows that we're working with text or a string. And what we write within the double quotes is exactly what we're going to output whenever we run this program. So let's go ahead and write a very simple string here. We're going to do hello uh, space world. And you can put whatever you'd like in here. Hello world, by the way, is just a very old tradition among programmers. It goes back all the way to the 1970s. Uh, what hello world is is just a common thing. Whenever programmers are getting started with a new language, they need to verify and validate that the language is working and that everything is installed properly. So the first program they always write is something like this, which just outputs text to the screen. And hello world has m miraculously remained this very popular thing to print out on the very first run of the program. It's kind of like a, a tradition, if you will, among the community. So that's why it's here. But you can absolutely put whatever you'd like in between the double quotes uh, by all means. So here we have it written within our Atom text editor, and let's go ahead and now run it using the Atom Runner add-on that we installed. In the next lesson, I'll take you to the command prompt, and I'll show you how to run this file from actually within the command prompt. But now that this file is written, we can use our shortcut that's going to be Alt plus R, hold Alt, press R, and there we see Atom Runner pops up here on the right side, and it says, here's the file name, example.rb. Right here we have our output, hello world, exactly what we asked for. Notice that the quotes are not present here and notice that it has actually executed, so it's output hello world. The put statement is also nowhere to be found, so this is part of the Ruby language. This is the only part that's actually been printed. We can see it right here. Right below we just have a status running Ruby. Here is the location of the file. It exited with code zero, that means no errors. And this is the amount of time it took. Of course on your end it may be a little bit slower, a little bit faster. But this is just basically an authentication or verification message. And here we have the output for the program. And that's it. That really is all, to, all there is to it. You write a bunch of code in a .rb file. You run it with Alt-R. You see the result right here. That's basically how we're going to proceed through the entire course. So if you want to practice a little bit, just practice putting puts here. Maybe write a, a couple more strings. You can see what happens if you write them on the same line on, this, on a different line. Uh, just make sure to wrap everything in double quotes. Try putting a little bit of symbols in there, a little bit of numbers, and see what happens. All right. And in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and run this file from the command prompt just to see an alternate example of how we can execute and run a sample Ruby file. So I'll see you there.